wanted to build a, a little example that has a form, very basic form that connects up to an app that actually does something that interacts with an API. And so I was recently reading about this new API that came out from the Art Institute of Chicago. And they've, it's really um, a nice API for you to study when you're looking at how to design your own APIs. I think they've done a beautiful job with it. And they have basically taken their collection. And so they have like their artworks, information about the gallery, their collections, all sorts of things are made available through the API. So what I thought would be kind of interesting to do is to use their API to um, let you search for artworks and then display them in the page uh, as you type. So, well, let's just jump into it. I have a, I have a React app here and it currently <laughs> it doesn't do much and it's let, let's make it do some things. Okay, so let's uh, let's start in on the code. So what we need to do is we need to um, work with a bunch of third-party components. So what I thought I would do is I would continue working with React Bootstrap and not because it's the only one you can use, but we've been using it. And um, I don't know, when you're learning this stuff, if you're constantly changing to new components all the time, it can get tricky. But I thought I would also use another component today. I, I really like this search input control from uh, Evergreen. And they have some neat components the uh, you know that you can use for different things. And so the one that I want is um, for doing search because it just looks kind of nice. Like it has a bunch of features that I'd, I'd like to use in what we're doing here. So I'm gonna use that and I'm gonna show you uh, a number of other things. So I've already gone ahead and set up the project. I won't make you sit through that, but I've basically got Bootstrap. I've got the Evergreen UI. I've, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use Lodash because we've been talking about it. So I'll show you a little bit of Lodash. I'm going to use React Bootstrap to, uh, to make this work. So those have already been installed. They're in my list of dependencies and they're ready to go. So my app can make use of them. So let's, let's get started. I've got the Bootstrap CSS pulled in. I've got my own app.css ready to go and we can start laying out our app. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make um, I'm going to make our app so that we basically have a, a search bar at the top that the user can use to uh, enter information. So let's throw in a div. This will be our um, main app div, and inside the div, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a nav bar. So just to remind you what the nav bar is. I want to have a nav bar really simple across the top that basically just has like the name of our app. I'm going to call this app artsy. So let's do that. Let's throw in a header and inside the header, I'm going to do the nav bar, nav bar. So I got to pull nav bar in um, from React Bootstrap like so. All right, so I have a uh, nav bar. This is lower B, sorry, nav bar, nav bar. So my nav bar, I'm going to do uh, background color dark. And I'm going to say that I want the variant of this to be dark. In other words, I want the text to be light colored. And I'll do nav bar dot brand, and I don't have a logo, but I'm just gonna put in artsy. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm doing something like this or something like this, where I'm just doing a nav bar and some branding text, a, a title across the top. So I will save this and this will recompile and we get our title at the top. Okay, so this needs some adjustments. Um, in my CSS, I've got a bunch of stuff in here. So let's get rid of this and let's change our the CSS for our app. So um, my app, I'm gonna say use uh, width 100%, uh, height 100%, 
And let's do, um, let's set a max width on this thing of, I don't know, like 1200 so that it doesn't go too wide. And if it does get any wider than that, margin left, auto, margin right, auto, like so. So now this thing is filling the top, which is what I want. And if I, you know, scroll over it, it stops like this. Now I actually would like this thing to continue. Well, no, I'm gonna leave it like this. I think I'll, this is perfect actually for what I wanna do. So I'm gonna have it look like that. Okay, good. So back in the app, we've got our nav bar. And the other thing that I would love to do at the top of this thing is I would love to put in an image. Like you can kind of see what they've done here. Like if you look at this, I like what they have. They've got this nav bar at the top, then they have a big image. And so in Bootstrap, that, that big image is called a Jumbotron. So the Jumbotron is this like great big banner at the top. And I'm gonna use that to uh, accomplish what I wanna do here. So I'm gonna say, underneath the nav bar, let's throw in a Jumbotron. And you can see that it's pulled in Jumbotron for me automatically from React Bootstrap when I use it, which is kind of nice. So I have my Jumbotron. I'm gonna tell it to be fluid to fill the whole space. And I'm just gonna say class name is equal to um, painting background. And I'll explain that in a second. So inside my Jumbotron, I'm gonna put uh, a container. And it didn't pull in container, which is interesting, container. So I have a container and I'll put a title in here, H1, and I'll say find art you love, like so. Find art that you love. So what I wanna do is I wanna, I wanna put a, um, I wanna put an image behind this. So I went looking, I went to uh, Unsplash and I found this painting that is kind of interesting. So I'd like to put this painting behind my text. So the way that I would do this is I would download a version of it and I'm gonna download the smallest version I can get. So I download the small version of this and so I get this image right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use um, squoosh.app. If you've never used it before, it lets you automatically resize images to be smaller. So I'm just gonna drag this image into Squoosh. And what it's gonna do is it's going to take a file that was 108 kilobytes and it's gonna, it's gonna crush it down so that it's quite a bit smaller. So now it's 59 kilobytes. And you can see on the left and the right what the difference is between the two. And I can't tell the difference. So this is good. And I've actually already saved this file into my project. So I have the file sitting in my editor and it's inside my source directory here so that I can make use of it. So what I wanna do is I wanna put it into the background of the Jumbotron. So let's do that. So I'm gonna go to my app.css and I'm gonna say dot painting background. And I'm gonna say that I wanna use a background URL is equal to, and then I'm gonna say dot slash, and I'm gonna list the file name like this. So it's pulling it from the same directory. It's in the source here. I'm saying this is where this thing exists. And what I'm also going to do, if I'll, I'll save that and you can see what it does. So it puts this uh, across the top, across the back rather, and I'll say um, background size uh, cover so that it will always fit this to the available space like this. So I have this in there. And I think what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna say color white like that. Now you can see how it's a little hard to read this text. Um, it's tricky to get a color that's going to work here. So there's a technique that you can use and I'm going to steal this from, um, this is from CSS Tricks and they talk about design consideration text on images. So one of the things that you can do is you can tint your image. So you can do a linear gradient and you can like, this is you know the image and then this is the darker version of the image. And so people will use this 
And so they will, I'll show you an example. So here's two examples. So here's the text over top of an image. Here's the text over top of an image that has this tinting on it. So if we use the tinting, what I'm gonna do is I'm basically gonna change it so that I have a, a linear gradient that I put first. So my background is gonna have a linear gradient and then, um, and then the URL for the image. And when I go back and do this, you'll see that the, this now stands out. It's easier to read. You've got the contrast that you need for, um, for being able to do this. So that, I mean, this, this looks a lot nicer. And while I'm here, I may as well throw it into the center. So text align center and put it in the middle of the page like that. Okay, that looks good. So the next thing that I wanna do is I wanna put a search bar underneath this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to I don't know, as, as soon as these files start to get longer and longer, like this is gonna get pretty big on the page. So what my general rule is, as this starts to become longer than a page, I tend to think about whether I should break it out into its own component. So I'm gonna do that right now, just because we're sort of focused on the form aspects of this. So I'm gonna show you, so let's add a new file. I'm gonna call this search.js. So inside search.js, what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna make use of this search input component. So I have to pull it in. So I'm gonna import search input from evergreen UI. And they show how to use it here. They say, you know, like you, you basically give it some placeholder text, you give it a width, um, you can give it a height, Etc. You can put margins in it, so you can play around with uh, with this a bunch. So I'm going to make my component uh, export default function search, and I'm going to say return a search input control, and let's just do the things in here. So placeholder, I'm going to say um, enter a search term, for example, cats. And I'm going to say, give it a width equal to 100%. And give it focus right away, autofocus it, so that when the user goes to the page, it automatically shows up. So let's just, let's start with this and then close this. And let's make use of this component. So I have a search component. I'm going to import my search component uh, here. So I'm gonna import uh, search from the search component like this. And then I'm gonna use my search component in the, in the app right inside the Jumbotron underneath here like so. So I'm gonna say search and uh, let's just start with that. Let's just see how it looks. Compiling, compiling, compiling. So there we go. So now we have our search at the top here under underneath our, our title. Enter the search term. So here's where we can type in whatever it is we're gonna do. And I get a number of nice features like this automatically, it'll clear it. It has a nice little, uh, the, the question mark that's there, which is, you know, just nice little touches that um, look really good. Okay, so what I'm also gonna do is down here at the bottom, I'm going to put in a place for my search results to go. So I'm gonna throw in my main element down here. Inside main, I'm gonna make a container and I'll say that I want a fluid container, like stretch it out so that it fills the available space. And then what I wanna do is I wanna put a search results component in here and we're gonna uh, I haven't built this yet so this is something that I need to build and it's unhappy with me why are you and oh it's unhappy with me because I don't have a close on my div oh I put main in the wrong spot main has to go inside the div like so like that okay so search results so let's make a file search results from search results like so 
And for the moment, search results can just be uh, export default function search results. And we'll just return um, results. So right now it's not gonna do much of anything, but that's fine. It gives us a starting point for us to be able to build this out. Okay, so let's think about the form aspect of this right now, because we're talking about forms. So in our um, notes this week, we're talking about how we do controlled components when we work with form data. So we said that a controlled component needs to receive its value from state in React, and then we need to handle the on change event to update whatever happens inside here. So let's make those changes in what we're gonna do. So in our app, I need some way to be able to pass in the value to the search, but I also need to be able to share that value, like somehow connect all this up with the search results and everything. So I have like, a bunch of state that I need to put somewhere and then work with it between multiple components. So how, how do we do this? Um, okay, well, let's think, about, let's think about what we could do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna introduce some state into our app. So inside the app, I'm gonna add um, a couple of things. So const query and set query equals use state Okay, so the first one is whatever the user types, their search term, their query term is gonna be some state that I'm gonna keep track of. And I'm also gonna keep track of the results. So const results and set results equals uh, use state. And at the beginning, I have no results. So I'm gonna say it's null like that. So the first thing I'd like to be able to do is I'd like to be able to pass the uh, query value into my search component. That means that my search component needs to be able to receive some props. So let's just use query. So I'm gonna say um, query equals the value of query in my state right here. And down here, I'm gonna pass the results into my search results component like so. So let's go and modify those two components so they can receive those props. So I'm gonna receive result or receive query on props from my search component. So from the parent, I'm gonna get those. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use it to set the value. The value is going to be equal to whatever query is. So just like we did in our example in the notes where we put the value into an input control, I'm gonna do the same thing with the search input control. So I'm basically just using a, uh, a fancier input control that has been wrapped up for me by Evergreen, this uh, third-party component to make it look a little bit nicer, but it works the exact same way. So if I scroll down, you'll see under controlled usage, what it's gonna do is it's gonna receive value and it needs to also receive a change event handler. So we'll talk about that in a second. So I'm passing down the query and I'm using the query on here like so. And let's do the same thing in the search results. I'm gonna pass down the results and I'm not currently doing anything with the results, but I'm receiving them. So we could, for example, console.log the results here if uh, you know we wanted to look and see what they were. Okay, so back in our app, we've got the query and we have the uh, results. So let's go a little bit further. So what I'd like to be able to do is I would like to be able to deal with um, what should I show? Like when my app starts up and I run the app like this, I have an error here. Uh, on, oh yeah, we, so it's complaining because I don't have a change handler. So it says you put a value on here, but you didn't put an on change handler. So that's a, that's a red flag. It means there's a problem. So let's solve that problem right now. So whenever the, uh, 
whenever the on change event handler happens in my search component here, I need to say on change equals something. So what should I do? Well, we know that the way that this works is we need to call into the parent function. So remember, I'm receiving the query data from the parent. So that's what's going on the value. And what I need to do here is I need to call up back up to the parent so that the parent can do something about this. So that means I'm going to expect an on change event handler to get passed down to me and I'm going to wire it up right here. So this component is really stupid in the sense that it doesn't know where the data comes from, doesn't even know what the data is. It doesn't know what happens when the data changes. It just has places where I, I kind of connect the wires. And once the wires are connected, it'll work. So this component is done. All I need to do is change my main app so I have an on change handler. Okay, so back here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my search component, which is right here. And I'm gonna say uh, on change is equal to, and now I'm gonna write a little tiny function. So I'm gonna receive an, an event handler, or an, an event, uh, um, I'm gonna receive an event argument, E, and I'm gonna use that to get the value out of this form control. So take a look at the notes again for a second. What did we do? On change handler, we were getting the target and we were getting the target's value, and that's what we were setting. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I basically, whenever the user types anything into the search box, I need to update this query value. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna say set query, and I'm gonna say e.target.value, like that. Okay, so I'm storing the query value, I'm passing the query value down from state, and whenever the component changes, it's gonna send an event up to me. I'm gonna capture that event, I'm gonna get the target element that was changed and I'm gonna use its value to update my state up here. So this will change. Okay, so if, if everything's working correctly, if we go here now and I clear this, let's just see if I refresh this and I start typing here A, B, C, you can see every time I'm typing, it's actually re-rendering the components. It's re-rendering these search results because this, whenever the data changes, it has to reload the page. So you can see that I, I have my, um, my callback happens every time. So every time I'm making a change, this is working. Okay, this is good. So let's take it a step further. So what I need to do now is I need to interact. I need to, so if I type in cats, I need to pass that data to this API. So the way, let's just take a look at how this API works. They've got an API where you essentially are going to hit a URL that, like their artworks URL, for example. And then what you can do is you can get back a specific artwork if you want. So like, for example, if I were to go and, um, if I were to curl this, I would get back a bunch of JSON. It's hard to read it. So let me just pipe it through JQ and you'll see that I get back a whole bunch of information. So I'm getting back information about this artwork. So I'm getting things like um, the description of the artwork, I'm getting information about the date, I'm getting um, some text about the, the way that it looks, I'm getting an ID, I'm getting a whole bunch of data about an artwork. So that's cool. And it's possible for me to, when I, when I do this, it's possible for me to request only certain fields. So instead of getting all of the data, I could just ask for some of the data. So let's just try this one. So if I grab this and I do curl this and I pipe that through JQ, I'm gonna get back a smaller object of data. So you can see that each one of these only has an ID. See, like if you notice what we asked for, we're asking for ID, title, artist, display, etc., And we're putting this in the query string by saying fields equal. So down here, you can see that those are the only fields that I'm getting sent back to me. So this is a really nice API in that way. You can do paging, you can say, give me, you know, like a certain number of elements, I want a limit of 100 elements. So here we could do the same thing. I could modify this and say, 
uh, and limit equals 25, and it'll give me 25 of those, uh, 25 of those elements. But you can also do searching, which is really cool. So if you wanna do full text searching on all of the artwork metadata, what you do is you use something like this. So they're saying if you wanna search, you just have to use slash search and then query equals cats. So this is cool because I have a query result. I just need to, um, I just need to deal with searching for it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my API code, the code that interacts with this uh, API. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move it into a separate file. So I'm gonna make a file called API, whoops, api.js. And inside api.js, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write up a couple of functions. So I'm gonna say export const search is equal to um, something that takes a query. Let's keep it simple for the moment. It takes a query and it needs to return back results. So let's do that. So I need to do a query against this. So essentially I wanna do something like this. The search query looks like this. Uh, like the, let's just use this one as an example. So I'm gonna say const API URL is equal to this. But instead of searching for cats, I'm gonna search for whatever the user has specified, whatever query the user has entered. Okay, so what I wanna do now is I wanna go and I wanna do a fetch. So I'm gonna say fetch API URL. And I, I'm gonna write this not using then and catch. I'm gonna write this as an asynchronous function because there's a, I, I like the style of writing an asynchronous function because it lets me do this. I can say await. So I can say const response equals await, which is like saying um, fetch API URL dot then response like so. So it's kind of the same code, but it's just a lot neater. If you wanna use await, you have to say that this is an asynchronous function. So anytime you use await, you have to decorate the function with uh, async. So I'm gonna get rid of this and I'm gonna say, uh, go and fetch the result for this, like that. And what are we gonna do with the result? So the result comes back. We need to check and see if the response that we get back is okay. If it's not okay, then we have a problem. And what I wanna do is I wanna throw a new error um, and I'll say like error loading um, search results. And I'll just put in what the error's status code was. So the status code was, um, res.status, like that. So if it, if it was okay, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna return the uh, JSON. So I'm gonna say return response.json, like that. So now I have search that I could use from API. So let's use this over here. So I'm gonna go into my, uh, I'm gonna import search from um, API, like that. So now I need to actually do this search. So let's think about how we're gonna make this happen. So I wanna do this search every time that the user changes the query value. So that means that I need an effect. So I have use state and I'm gonna do use effect. I have a side effect that I wanna run. So the query is going to update. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say use effect, and I'm gonna put a function in here that needs to be run every time that the query changes. So I'm gonna say this depends on the query value like that. So I'm gonna put in the dependency and say it depends on the query value. And what are we gonna do in here? So the first thing I'm gonna do in here is I'm gonna say don't do anything if Okay, so if the query is nothing, 
like if it's empty, or if query.length is zero. So if, if, if these things aren't true, then what I wanna do is um, I wanna set my results to nothing. So the reason I'm doing that is I wanna clear any results. So if the user clears, if they delete the value that's inside of the query, then I wanna delete this. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do, and after I do this, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna say return. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, if the query's length is less than three, then don't do anything. Because when they're typing, until they type three characters, I don't have enough to search for. So if it's or if they just type two, it's not enough. So I'm gonna say, you gotta type more than that before I'm gonna do something. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, all right, at this point, I'm about to begin doing a search. So I'm gonna say search for the query like so. And when you get back the results, the results are gonna come back. They've already been parsed. So I get back the results. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna look at the results and I'm gonna say, if we have results and the way that the results come, so let me show you how the results are supposed to be formatted. If we go to the API endpoints here, and if I look up search, search is going to return, um, I wanna show you an example. Search, search, here's search. So here's an example of search. So this is what the data would look like that comes back. So it's gonna have a bunch of information about pages. So I actually had some people who were asking me on Teams, how do I send page information from an API? Like how do I tell the user you're on page one and there are 30 pages? Well, one thing you can do is you can just stick the, the paging data right inside the response, the JSON response that comes back from your API. And then what you can do is you can put the result, like the actual data inside something called data. So here you can see what the data looks like. It's an array of all of the search results. So what I wanna do is I wanna take uh, the results and I wanna say if results and results.data, if I get back data essentially, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the results to be results.data. So I'm basically just gonna grab this array right here and I'm gonna stick it into results that I have up at the top. And if there's an error, I'll catch the error. And for now, I'm just gonna console.log error like that. Console.log the error. We could do something more fancy, but for the moment, I'll keep it simple. So I'll save this. And let's take a look. So I'll clear this and Let's clear this and we'll watch for the network activity here. So I'm going to start typing C, A, T. And you can see that as soon as I got above two characters, it did a search. And if I say cats, it does another search. And if I delete the S off, it does another search. So as I'm typing, it's going and doing all of these searches for me. So if we take a look at the results that we're getting back, you can see the response that's coming back. It has the data that we were talking about right here. So what I need to do now is I need to pull this data off of here and make use of it. So let's go in and look at our search results for the moment. So inside search results, I'm gonna receive the results. And if we go back here, you'll see that right now we're console logging it. So you can see that I'm getting back 10 items uh, 10 items that uh, I'm displaying. So let's display this, uh, let's display this inside of our, our results. So the first thing I have to deal with is the case where I have no results. If I don't have any results, then I'm just gonna return null, like that. What about the case where 
I have results, but there's zero items in it. So that would be different. So that would be if results dot length uh, is equal to zero, then we could return, um, you know, no results like that. So this is this is a slightly different case. If we get null, the reason we would get null is because the data doesn't exist. And if we get back uh, an array with a length of zero, then it means we have no results. If, if neither of those is the case, then that means we actually have results and we can do something with it. So what we're gonna do is let's, let's return something that looks a little bit nicer. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use the card again, just because it's easy to use. So let's do something like this, where we, we create a card and the card has like everything that we need for uh, for showing this. And I'm also going to um, put it in a layout. So just a, a quick note about how these layouts work. You can specify inside of a container, you can say that you wanna have um, a row and you wanna have columns. And when you define your columns, you can give you can say how much space you want each column to take up. So let me scroll down and show you an example for responsive. Okay, so here. So depending on the width of the screen, you could say if I'm in a small width versus um, extra small versus large, they have all these different breakpoints. Like you can see extra small, uh, medium, large, etc. You can define different widths. So if I'm in an extra small screen, I have, imagine I have 12 units all the way across here. I could say I want it to equal 12 or I want it to equal eight. So it'll take up eight available units going across. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, if the screen is very narrow, I just wanna display one card. But if I'm on a screen that has more space, I wanna do three cards, four cards, whatever it is as we go across. So let's, let's do that. Let's take, Let's return, so I'm gonna need a, I'm gonna need a couple things from React Bootstrap here. I'm gonna need to import row, column, and card from React Bootstrap, like so. So I'm gonna return a row. Inside the row, I'm going to write some code that takes the results and maps it so that I can um, make each result look like uh, the data that I want to return. So the data that I want to return looks like this. I want to have a column inside the row, and I want to say on an extra small, if the screen size is extra small, I want to take up 12 units of space. And if, um, you know, if I'm on medium, let's say I want to do uh, four as an example. And if I'm on, well, let's start with that and just see. And if I'm on a large screen, then I'll do maybe, maybe I'll do three. So you'll see that this will jump between the three of them. Now, because I'm doing a column and I'm every time you map in React, I'm repeating this column over and over and over again, you need to do a key. So I'm gonna say, take the, I need some piece of data from this API. So look at these results. So if you look at a result, here's a result right here. So I gotta find something in here that's unique. And I have an ID, so that's perfect. I'm gonna use the ID. So I'm gonna say key is equal to uh, result.id, like that. Okay, so inside here, I'm gonna make a card. Let's just take a look at the card again. Here's the code for a card. So I'm gonna have a card. And inside there, I wanna have a card.image. And I still need to figure out how to do the image because I don't actually have the image yet. So I'm gonna come back to come back to the image. But for now, I can say that I want it to be at the top. And I still need to figure out the source and uh, what source I'm gonna put in there. But interestingly, um, I do have a, 
here I have like alt text inside thumbnail. So I should be able to go through and say um, alt is equal to result dot thumbnail dot alt text like that. And let's also just put some text in here. So card uh, dot body in the body, I'll say card dot title is going to be the result dot title. So this like this right here. Result dot title, close that off there, save this. And let's see how this works. So this already is working. So if I delete this, I get no results. If I type in cats, as soon as I type cats, it's, it's displaying all of this information here, which is good. And I'm only getting 10 results. So if I wanted to do more results, what I need to do is I need to go over here and I need to modify my query a little bit. So I need to say, um, query is equal to whatever they are searching for and limit equals, let's say we want to load 30. So if I re refresh this now, what it's going to do is, okay, so now I've got a bug. So let's look at this bug for a second. It says, cannot read property alt text of null. So that means that when it, that means that it must be possible that some of the some of the data that's being returned doesn't have a thumbnail. Okay? So if you take a look at what we're doing here, we're saying go into the result, go into the thumbnail and use uh, alt text like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a trick. There's a new uh, operator in JavaScript that you can use and it essentially says I'm going to say question mark dot like that. So it says if the thumbnail exists on result, then go into it and get the alt text. If it doesn't exist, then just return nothing. So let's try that. Okay, so I'm gonna say cats and that works. So now I've got all these results coming across. If I change the width of this, you'll see that it goes to three. If it goes wider, it does four then it does three, and if I get really narrow, it's gonna do one, three, four. So that's these breakpoints right here. On an extra small screen, show 12. On a medium-sized screen, each one of these takes up four units, and on a larger screen, each one of them takes up three units, something like that. Um, you could change it around to make it look the way that you think looks good. Now, we don't have the image yet. So the data that I'm getting back, I don't have the image. And so the, the way that the image works, like they give me this thumbnail image, but I don't think this is what I want. Let me just confirm. I, it's possible that I'm wrong. Yeah, so like this is JSON info about the image, not the image itself. So the way that their images work, um, they have an API where the way you're supposed to do it is you're supposed to pass in the image ID for, you have to pass in the image ID for the, um, for the artwork. So you have to request it. You have to request the image ID when it comes in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna modify this API call a little bit more and I'm gonna say, uh, this is getting here, this is getting long. So I'm gonna say API URL equals, let's do this. API, or API URL equals this. And then on another line, I'm gonna say const query string equals this. So I'm gonna say that I wanna pull in various fields so that I, you know, I have access to all of this data. And so the fields that I know that I want are like ID type, like this, basically what they're doing here is what I need to do. So I wanna pull in these fields 
And I also know that I want the thumbnail, right? Because that that's what's breaking in the um, search results. So I want to, if possible, I want the thumbnail to get returned. So I need the ID, the thumbnail, the title, and I also need um, the image ID, the thumbnail. So I'm just going to ask for all of these things. So now here I'm going to say fetch API plus query string like that. So I'll just build it. I'll do it in two lines so that I have access to all the pieces that I need. Okay, so back in the search results, what I'm going to do is I'm going to essentially I need to fig I need to get this URL for an identifier. So I have a couple ways to do this. I could actually do it right here. Like I could say source equals and then um, put this in like this. And let's do it that way. And I'll show you. So I could do this. I could say source equals this. And right here, I could say dollar um, result dot uh, image ID like that. So that, let's see if that works. It does. So now if I do a query for cats, I get all of these artworks, um, all the artworks come back and um, a couple of them don't have images, which is interesting, like so. So this image doesn't exist. So we could we could get fancy here and we could put a fallback image in or, you know, there's other things we could do. I'm not going to take this example too much further because it already does what we want. Um, I can search for anything, you know, water and I get the water lilies or uh, all these different different things, different pieces of artwork come up. So this is great. This is this is working exactly the way that I want it uh, I want it to work. And at this point, it's probably good enough for us to pause. So just to review the most important parts of what we've done here based on um, our, exp our exploration of doing form stuff today. Number one, we are keeping track of the state of the form in the app or in a component. It doesn't have to happen inside of it doesn't have to happen inside of um, the app like this. We are passing that data into our search component into its value. So we call this a controlled component where React is responsible for the state and it's passing it down and, it, and the component is just rendering it. We are wiring up an on change event handler and the on change, what it's doing is it's getting the target of the change event, it's getting its value and then it's updating the, uh, the value that React is hanging on to, okay? And then we're using that to do our search results query here. Actually, you know what, one thing we could do in here is we could move this effect. See, this file is getting kind of long. And actually what I could do is I could move this code for the results and I could move the results um, down into, let's, let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna move it into the search results file. So I'm gonna move this into the search results and I'll show you how that will evolve the code so I'm going to modify this code slightly. I'm going to pass the query down to the search results. And that will keep my app a lot cleaner. Like there's less happening here. And I'll move this down into the search results here. And I also need to import use effect and use state from React. So let me just talk about how this is going to be changing. So I'm going to say query. Query comes from 
above on props. And I'm going to put the, the, the results state inside of this component. And the rest of this can remain the same. If we don't have any, if, okay, so if results is nothing, do this. If the, okay, this is all, this should all work exactly the same. So let's just try it and see. So I'll do a search for cats. Yeah, and that works fine. So the reason I wanted to show you this is that I, it's, it's good when you're designing these things to try and think about how to keep each level of your React component tree as small as possible. And so I'm just saying basically that I have a search component and I have a search results component. And these two things are sharing a bit of state. So I put that state inside of the parent of both those components. However, the search results is unique to the search results component. So I can move it down here and I can manage the network loading and all the rest of it inside here. So my app doesn't know anything about the network. It doesn't know how to display the results. It just delegates that responsibility to the search results here and the search results takes care of it. Anyway, that's a good place for us to pause. We've built out um, a useful little, little app, water, and loads in all of our, all of our uh, artworks using a very cool API, using information with forms, the user can interact with it. And we did it in, you know, like 100, I don't know, 100 lines of code, couple hundred lines of code. Like there's not a lot of code here, but the app is, um, it's backed by real data, it's interactive. Um, it will respond to changes in the Art Institute's uh, collection if they get new, new works of art. I could make it so you could click on these and go get more information or download a higher quality image, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, all of that because we have a simple controlled form element inside the page. 